Hi, my name's Gary Woodman. I'm Chief Executive of the Worcester Lowe's Enterprise Partnership. And uh, as part of the series that we're doing with Harrison Clark Wickerby's, I've got Harry Bengoff with me, uh, who can now introduce himself and his role within Harrison Clark Wickerby's uh, and what we're going to talk about. Harry. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Hi, I'm Harry Bengoff. I head up the banking and finance team at Harrison Clark Rickabees, um, based in a number of our offices, but obviously in, in Worcestershire and, and the West Midlands. No, that's great. And certainly, um, government in this time have kind of made a number of announcements about um, sort of schemes that they put out there to help businesses that are going through the banks. Um, and, and just give us a kind of flavour of some of those schemes. I mean, they're well highlighted in the media, but I think it's helpful just to sort of set the scene, really. Sure. Well, there, there are quite a number of them, and there's there's a great deal of detail that can be attached to each of them. But we can we can give a high level view of them perhaps now, and that's that's probably the best way to to tackle them. But um, at the, the core of all these schemes is the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, which is shortened to CIVILS. Um, that's, it's aimed at UK businesses um, that were viable pre-COVID-19, but have lost revenues or have had disruptions to their cash flow as a result of the pandemic. Um, you, there are, the, the criteria for that, that scheme are that uh, any business applying must have a turnover of no more than 45 million um, and must generate about 50% or more of its turnover from trading activity. Um, the loans can be for up to 5 million and they can consist of term loans, overdrafts, invoice finance facilities, um, asset finance lines. Um, and then the banks can also limit that amount of the loan to around two times your 2019 annual wage bill um, or 25% of your turnover. Um, pricing of these loans can be up to the banks themselves, um, but the government obviously is putting a bit of pressure on not making sure they're extortionate, not they should be anyway, because not least because the government will pick up the tab for the first 12 months of the interest of these loans. Okay. Um, There's been a bit of controversy around them in the sense of um, perhaps banks asking for personal guarantees. What, what sort of happened on that? Yeah, so there was, there was significant pressure really early on in the scheme. And I would just say that this, this scheme was launched in a bit of a hurry. Um, there's no doubt about that. It was based on a, on a scheme called the Enterprise Finance Guarantee Scheme, which was born out of the 2008 financial crisis. So it was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction from the government to say, well, there is a sort of scheme in place, let's, let's make it look like that. Um, that wasn't fit for purpose, so it has evolved. But in that process, quite a number of banks started to take personal guarantees for these loans. And the media backlash has led to the fact that now mm -hmm. loans under £250,000 can no longer have a personal guarantee attached to them. Loans in excess of that can but banks can't look to take security over personal residences in support of those guarantees. Okay. And sort of in response to the seed bills, it seems as though government have also been sort of tweaking and coming up with a few new ones. The bounce back scheme is a sort of response to perhaps companies who would have fallen through the gaps of seed bills. Yeah. So there's, well, there, there are a number of schemes which we'll probably touch on a bit later, but the bounce back scheme was, um, was again response to the fact that businesses were applying for these loans, um, but credit processes and, and other aspects of the scheme just led to funds not necessarily getting out of the door quickly enough for businesses that needed it. So the, <clears throat> the bounce back scheme, which actually only launched this week, um, is for much smaller loans, but the credit process is much shorter the government support is, is more significant. They actually guarantee up to 100% of the loan uh, okay. now. So yeah, it, it's designed for much smaller, but faster, faster loans. And what sort of other um, kind of uh, mechanisms have the government put in place during this period? So the CBILS, it, in, in, it went in this, this order, I suppose. So CBILS was launched, but at the same time, <clears throat> the government announced a 
a much larger facility called the corporate, um, sorry, the Coronavirus Corporate Financing Facility or CCFF. That was for um, rated businesses, so those that are rated by the likes of Moody's and S&P. So much, much larger businesses. And that was a paper big, large, big, large corporations then. It, exactly, much larger corporations. So not really looking after the SMEs of this world, which we're all much more interested in our, in our world. Um, so you can see that from between Seabills, which had an upper limited 45 million turnover through to CCFF, which is, as I say, much, much larger businesses, there's a huge, huge gap there in terms of the mid market. So they were known as the squeezed middle. That gap eventually got uh, filled by what's known as the coronavirus large business interruption loan scheme or Clibbles. Um, so that's got the minimum limit of 45 million turnover and there's no upper limit and the size of the loans can be up to 50 million yeah so there, there's quite a bit of support out there and i think probably initially there's been a sort of lot of media focus a lot of businesses going in but i suppose um you know those businesses who've got a good working capital who think actually i don't want to take a loan at this point um you know what, what sort of advice would you give to them at the moment i would give at the moment is not to rest on your laurels, I suppose. Um, no one has a crystal ball. No one knows quite how long this, this scheme will last. We've obviously got a significant announcement this, this Sunday, um, which will have, hopefully have a clearer idea on how we're looking to exit this, this um, lockdown. But that best guess at the moment is that's going to be a phased program. Um, we're not looking like we're going to return to normal anytime soon, if at all. So businesses should be trying to plan for disruptions to your cash flows for a significant period. So while you might have some working capital available now, you should definitely be looking at uh, protecting yourself for the future, just how long this goes on for, we just don't know. So it's always worth at this stage, picking up with your advisors, um, be it accountants, uh, lawyers, corporate finance advisors, and just just make sure your forecasts are based on very on reasonable assumptions and looking for particular cash flow pinch points. Okay, and if you are a business that's kind of gone into your bank, um, basically gone, gone through a sort of bit of a process and then being told no, well, what should you do then? You assume that this is a business that's approached its existing bank at the stage so that's that's the typical route um and provided that lender is uh Siebel's or clibbles or, or the other schemes accredited if they turn you down world is not over you're, not all is lost there are there are a good number of lenders on that on the Siebel scheme um i think nine more were announced today or yesterday so we're probably up to around 60 lenders that are accredited through this that Siebel scheme so you can, of course, approach any of those. Uh, you, a word of warning, I suppose, on that stage is any, any of those lenders that are approved are focusing much more on their existing client base at the moment and trying to make sure that they can support their existing clients. So quite often they're inundated with requests. So new business is, is not often a priority. But that's not to say that they're not going to look at at new business and and indeed we can we can rely on those that we know are looking for new business and looking to support new customers so the first turn away is not is not your last shot at it i would i would say that best to get as much feedback as you can on why your application was rejected that's probably your first first port of call you can look to then refine your application refine your modeling and then if you are able to have another second bite of the cherry then then your application is more likely to succeed uh, that's great Harry that's been uh, really helpful in terms of just understanding if you do get a no actually those there are extra lenders coming on all the time but what steps should you do really to protect your cash flow over the sort of this next period hugely dependent I suppose on your business sector but you should be looking at uh, all the other government schemes available. 
um, that you can take advantage of now. Um, I'm sure most businesses have already looked at these or if they're not already taking advantage of them, but certainly worth looking at. Um, I'm no expert on each of these, but I can mention briefly, but I would suggest anybody interested in them, please do get in touch and I can direct them to the right person at HCR. But, but clear ones like the uh, coronavirus job retention scheme, which is the furloughing scheme. Um, and there's a self-employed version of that. Those are really um, being employed by a lot of people. So certainly a, a useful tool. Um, there are, of course, grants available to certain sectors. So in particular, things like uh, his, uh, hospitality and leisure. Um, but I think that certainly what every business should be doing if they haven't already is looking at producing regular regular sort of receipts and payment forecasts. Um, cash modeling will be just so, so important for every business right now. As we mentioned at the outset, the, we, we haven't got a crystal ball, but you can do as much as you can in terms of just trying to protect um, protect your cash by trying to forecast and look for, look for pinch points. Um, I, it's also, I think, worth mentioning at this stage that any business that is struggling this time, perhaps look at ways of just adapting your business to the new normal, if indeed that is a is possible. But there are ways of adapting a business that you can start generating different cash flows as a result of the crisis we're going through. You know, obvious examples being online retailing, um, which some businesses might not have taken advantage of, but now is, is more, more prevalent than ever, really. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely aware of um, some real entrepreneurial business uh, owners and managers who, who are sort of, yeah, found a different way or found a different market or managed to go online or gone from a restaurant to takeaway. You know, th those kind of initiatives of working around both the social distancing piece and still delivering some sort of income into the business has really been fundamental. Yeah. Um, that's been great, Harry, in terms of... Um, you know that kind of. I think I think a lot of businesses have probably heard a lot about the Seville scheme. Um, the bounce back, like you said, has just been launched, and, and maybe thought, well, that's that's not the route we want to go. But I think that that bit of advice around, um, you know, actually taking your time, you know, really projecting your finances at this time, um, because a we we don't quite know how long this will last, or equally how quickly the pickup will come or not come, uh, and therefore actually suddenly you might need these schemes and therefore you know probably talking back to your advisors this time and just kind of refreshing some of those forecasts you know every couple of weeks just to see you know have you got it right what does that look like in relation to the changing circumstances as we go through this i don't know if you want to kind of add anything in terms of conclusion as well that you think is really important or coming through from clients at the moment yeah i mean it's absolutely right that we should be talking to your advisors and we we recognize this pretty early on actually when clients started coming to us and, and asking our advice on, on what they should be doing. And, and they, you know, as legal experts, we can advise on, on the legal documents, but we realized that there needed to be a pretty joined up approach between all advisors really in this, in this, in this time. So we, we reached out to a lot of our, um, our accountancy and financial advisors as well to try and team up with them and make sure we're supporting our, clients all in the same way because we're all trying to get to the same same place here which is to get through this this pandemic um so if, if you don't already have good links into into these sorts of advisors please do do get in touch we can we can put you in touch with the right people for the right size business um and at the right time so yeah we're, we're certainly here to support thank you Harry. that's great thanks very much